so in the previous video we discussed about what is the graph and what are the types of the graph now it's important that you understand how is the input given and how do you store a graph so for that in this video we will be discussing how is the input taken and how do you represent a graph in java so basically just imagine this is the graph so what the problem statement or the input statement will state is you are given an undirected graph let's assume it's an undirected graph so in this undirected graph what they will tell you is they are going to give you n which is going to represent the number of nodes like over here the number of nodes will be 5 and then they will tell you that they are going to give you m let's assume this m is the number of edges so over here if you count the number of edges it is 7 after that they are going to tell you that m lines will follow that is 7 lines are going to follow and every line will have a u and a v basically it means there is an edge between u and v so like over here there is an edge between 1 and 2 so they are going to tell you that there is an edge between 1 and 2 after that there is an edge between 2 and 3 so they are going to tell you that there is an edge between 2 and 3 after that there is an edge between 2 and 4 so they are going to tell you so quickly i'll write everything down so basically if you carefully observe if there is an edge between 1 and 2 they are only telling you that once they are not telling you that there is an edge between 2 and 1 also so if it is said 1 and 2 there is an edge you have to assume that there is an edge between 2 and 1 also in case of an undirected graph now just in case if this was a weighted graph the third parameter would have been there where they would have told you that there is a weight of the graph but then we will discuss that at the later half of the video so how can you store the given input or the given graph in a data structure so the first way to do this is to use an adjacency matrix so what you first do is you go and see what is the value of n so that's 5 and the second thing that you observe is is the graph 1 based indexing or is it 0 based indexing like over here the graph is 1 based indexing because it starts from 1 2 3 4 5 so what you do is you basically create a n plus 1 into n plus 1 matrix it can be a boolean matrix it can be an integer matrix that is on your choice so let's create a 6 cross 6 matrix so you create a 6 cross 6 matrix and you make sure that everything is filled with zeros now at first the edge that is given to you is 1 2 so what you do is go to the first row yes then you go to the second column and make this guy 1 so that is basically saying that there is an edge between 1 and 2 if there is an edge between 1 and 2 there is also an edge between 2 and 1 so what you go is you go to the second row and go to the first column and make it 1 similarly for the next edge that is 2 3 you go to the second row and to the third column and make it 1 and you go to the third row and to the second column and make it 1 so both of the edges have been done and in this way you can do this for all the edges that are given to you and at the end your entire graph data structure will be stored in your adjacency matrix now what are the disadvantages of using this adjacency matrix now what if the value of n that is given to you uh, will be in the range 10 to the power 5 so in that case there will be a memory problem because you cannot create a 2d array of 10 to the power 5 into 10 to the power 5 because that's going to give you memory limit exceeded so in that case we have to use the other one so before moving on to the other one let's quickly check out the code for the adjacency matrix in java so what we do is initially i have just pre-assigned it without taking the input so you can take the input right and after that what we do is we create a n plus 1 into n plus 1 in each array once you have done that assume there is an edge between 1 and 2 so we basically go to the first row and the second column and mark it as 1 similarly we go to the second row and the first column and mark it as 1 and if there is an edge between 2 and 3 we do the same thing go to 2 and 3 and mark it as 1 and then we go to 3 and 2 and mark it as 1 so that is how you can do it in java so if i'm going to write that in general terms i can say adjacency of uv is marked as 1 and similarly adjacency of vu is marked as 1 so that's the general term when you take the input basically mark the uv row column and vu row column as 1 so the other way in which you can use the graph data structure will be to use the adjacency list now over here we don't create an n plus 1 cross n plus 1 array instead of that what we do is we create an array list of array list basically saying inside the array list there are array list so i'm gonna have n empty array list 
with indexed as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are six array lists that I'm adding into this array list. So single array list is containing six empty array list indexed from 0 to 5. Now, whenever there is an edge between 1 and 2, what I do is I go to the first indexed array list that is this and I store 2 in it. And since there is an edge between 2 and 1, I also go to the second indexed array list and store a 1 in it. So basically, every indexed array list is storing all its adjacent nodes which have edges pointed to it. So at the next, I can say that 3 is an adjacent node of 2 and there is an edge pointing towards 3 from 2. So 2 is gonna store a 3 as well as 3 is going to store a 2. Similarly, if I go for the next 2, 4, I can say 2 is having an adjacent node 4 and there is an edge pointing to 4. Similarly, 4 is having an adjacent node 2 and there is an edge pointing from 4 to 2. So this is how you are going to store it. So in this way, you can store in an adjacency list. Now I can say that the space complexity will suffice over here because the number of edges will not exceed a certain length and we can create that many array list. So there is not going to be any problem when we use the adjacency list. So let's check out the Java code for the adjacency list representation of a graph. So what I've done is I've hard coded everything without taking the input. So the number of nodes and the number of edges are three. After that, I have declared an array list of array list. After that, I've added n plus one array list to it. So that is done because it is one based indexing. So assume there is an edge between one and two. So I get the array list at the index one and I add a two to it. And I also get the array list at the index two and I add a one to it. So that is how you're going to add an edge one two. So just in case, just in case, if you have to do it for normal generalized way. So I can say I'm going to take it from U and I'm going to add a V. Similarly, I'm going to take a V and I'm going to add a U. So this will be the generalized version if you're taking inputs to store the adjacency list. Now, what if a weights are given to you? If it is a weighted graph, there is a weight between every edge. So what will you do in that case? So in that case, the inputs will be given like UVW for M lines and every edge will have like 1, 2 is weighted as 2 and 2, 3 is weighted as, let's assume it's 2. So in this way, every edge will have a own weight. So what you can do is instead of integer, you can store a pair of integer. Yes, you can store a pair of integer, integer. And over here, what you're going to do is Whenever you're storing 2 comma 1, you can have that pair stored. Basically 1 comma 2 and 1 has an edge weight of 2. So you basically store it 2 over here. So this is how you can store it. But we are going to discuss this in brief when we are going to solve problems related to weighted graphs in the upcoming videos. So as of now, you can just understand the adjacency list representation and that should be done. So guys, I hope you have understood the adjacency matrix and the adjacency list representation. So just in case if you did, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to our channel, please, please, please do subscribe to our channel. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in the next video of this graph series.